You might actually wonder what I'm doing in my kitchen with a vast saucepan which you normally boil down cooking apples in the autumn. What am I doing? I'm making some ground baked beans. I'm going to be oh, using some long grain rice here. I'm going to be boiling it up. I've already got the wife to do one batch, but she's had enough. And I've got to watch a bit of telly. So I've got to do the others. Get a huge saucepan of water. Get it boiling. I mean boiling because you can save on time by putting a cup full of water to get it going. Scatter it in. Don't do it in one big gob of rice. Scatter it all around like this. This is a, I think a one kilo bag. I've used a course machine. Of course you guys think we're going to go for roach or dates or char or something like that. And use this as the feed. And do you know what people? You would very much be wrong. I'm going to boil up the second batch of rice. I'm going to take some flavouring with me, some oil, yes, raptor oil, maybe a handful or two of brown. I'm going with my son far, far out to sea in a small boat, bobbing about. That's right, I'm taking the rice to sea and the species I'm going to be going for, black bream. I feel a bit like a witch with a cauldron. And the head torch there. It's just, I'm letting that boil. Hopefully your wife watches it boil over. I'll be getting the tackle ready in the garage. that way a bit. That's enough. Right. wind against tide. Not too much, back a bit, about there. That seems to be no, the just taking hold more. Yeah. Well, working on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, guys, this is a bit of a tip about black bream fishing. I'm out with Mike from TA Outdoors. He's down there, he's already been piling some fish, black bream, we've had dogfish. Uh, we haven't even started our assault on the black bream down here on the South Devon coastline. We're in a good old wood clinker built boat, traditionally built boat, lovely to be in. Even got the row locks there, I hope. And the oars are there, yeah. Hope we don't have to row back. It's got an old diesel inboard engine. It's an old Bob boat, what we call the Bobs, Bob, 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 Bob. But they go on forever. Well, we hope, anyway. Now, secret weapon today, the tip is, with black bream, they do respond well to a bit of ground bait, chum, chopped up fish or whatever. But one of the top methods they use on the south coast of England is actually, wait for this, rice. That's it. Now, you saw me cooking the rice in the kitchen. I've got it out here in the boat. We're pitching around and it's going to be windy. I think Mike's on a fish. No, I'm checking bait. He's doing a bait check. There's the rice. I'm going to put some bran with that. And I'm going to put some of our secret raptor oil and mix it all up and put it down in this. Just let it hang down in a tube and percolate out. It's a piece of soil pipe, four inch soil pipe with a plug there. We've used them before for ground baiting. I normally put mash fish in there. I've got my lib weight. Oh! two pound lead weight there. And I'm going to fill that up, lower it down on a piece of crab line or corline as we used to call it. I don't know what they call it. Probably different. Just lower it down. Let that just trickle away in the tide and see if we can uh, see if we can drive the bream into a feeding frenzy. 
So I've got some regular horse feed bran in here. Gonna mix that up. Yeah, mic's on. Whoa. He's using a five piece travel rod, which is not usually used for bream, but it's got a hell of a bend in it. Folks down to about that. Yeah, you put it in a backpack, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it's really it's tiny, tiny rod. This was quite a good take, so this might be bream keeper. This was a good fish. Yeah, Mike's doing a tea outdoors. We're going to do a catch and cook. He's had a nice mackerel, which we got in the cooler down here. There you go, nice. Nice fresh mackerel that actually hit the same rig and I've got cool blocks in there, freezer packs. He's still battling I cast gamefully it. with this. Hopefully we don't go around the other 23 rods we got out. <laughs> We're over reef here off South Devon so we've actually got a couple of uh, rods down with big baits on. But this one does look like a bream I would guess. Yes. There he is. It's a, it's a self unhooking bream as well. Yeah, is he a bit small? I'd say. Yeah. He's a bit too small. Yeah, nice size bream. Anybody be pleased with those? But yeah. over here with our size limits, I'll tell you what. Let's measure him. That's our current regulation. So it's nose to tail. Wait, there's the zero. There. So we are there. Fork of the tail, isn't it? Yep. No, nose, nose to the tip of the tail. You even take the fish away. That's 28. Okay, that is a keeper actually. That's 28, but we're putting back. And 23 is the, yeah. is the size, but we're going to put them back anyway. Wow, it's a gunky old job. I wonder if anybody would ever eat this with bran in it. You need about 14 pints of beer to get it down your neck, I should think. So that's all mixed up there. Next thing is a secret addition. Actually, I'm going to wash those, so I can't get it off, it's like glue. Water is so warm. Ooh. Nearly, nearly a face full, is the magic raptor oil. Secret ingredient is going in, all of it. Even going to rinse it out. And you think it's not oily, if I do this and just wash this out, like this. That should start to flatten that surface Whoa, off back there. That was a big hit. Another one? Yeah, it was going down. Oh, it might be a it's mackerel. A mackerel. It's a mackerel. Hopefully, it's a mackerel. He's got that. That's why I hit it on the way down. Look how shallow it is. It's on the surface. Wait a minute, is that a mackerel? What is that? No, it's got a fish. Hey! What can I do? Garfish coming in. Look how he's hit it on the way down. Foul hook, I think. He's got it and he's wrapped up. You want to swing it? Yeah. Nice garfish. We don't care where he's hooked. That is, yeah. That's a good garfish. Garfish with wet hands? They're, uh, yeah. They're very um, and you, fish. Yeah, you can eat these as well. Well, they've got green bones apparently. I'm yeah, going to let really him finish good. doing his stuff and I'll show him to because I don't want another hook in me. He's had a hammer at that, hasn't he? Yeah. He's missed it, but he's gone for it. He's missed it and Shows he's got you the. The water's still warm though, and the that's where the mackerel is still yeah. Long old teeth, like prehistoric, isn't it? Yeah, you can see his teeth there. Awesome. And you see the green on his back, actually. Lovely green colour there. Really green. But they, we'll put this one back, I think. They also make a good shark bait as well. Not oh, species. It's doing well. Gone. So, there's the system. There's the Corleen, you can see. I'm trying to keep locus the wind in the mic here. There's all the holes in it. There's my weight, which goes on the bottom if I can. It's so heavy. It needs to, that's better. Drops down to the bottom and just hangs there. And I fill it up with our mix. I better put that there because I bet it'll be filthy the time we finish with it. All this can go in there. And it wouldn't surprise me if we actually get other species coming in as well. Apparently the bream do like rice. It's a standard ground bait feed up on the south coast of England. We're down in the forest of West Country here. 
long drive for us Hampshire boys or Somerset is yeah. where Mike is but uh, trust me it's a lovely spot a lovely area to fish a bit windy today a bit breezy I think it's dying down a bit it's just an edge come off it so I'm just going to put this bung in and if you guys are seeing this up over the side we go and then I can jig that I can see it pouring out already absolutely pouring out already let this all go grey and make sure you hold on to the end I'm going to be close to the bottom and that's me done now I'm going to tie that just around here and that can just hang in the current there now we've got quite a current run if I show you a ball of a ball of feed like this you'll see that it's actually going into the wind that way so the tide must still be going that way and that could attract other fish as well we can only try so we're now uh, is this not spinning the drag is he no. well it must have been a long way back so he's on something mike definitely a fish yeah yeah and we've put the rice out up higher in the water seeing if they're where is that bream. oh it's a bream yeah nice bream really well there. he did actually I thought he was a lot bigger than that it's a nice sized fish the average size fish yeah, good is stuff. really really good I mean we're, we're on what, seven seven fish or so already yeah. well we went a bit quiet but now Mike's hooked up again on the light rod the wind well you see the size of the waves are still white caps I want to see what this fish is not kicking at all. I got it down as a dogfish. Wait, unless it's some sort of ray. We reckon this could be a dogfish, this one. It's a dog eat. Just shows they take those small hooks out. Yeah. And we just literally changed the bait from cuttlefish to fresh frozen squid. He's it. They made it and it's straight away, wasn't it? That was, yeah. Absolutely, straight away. Watch your loose hooks. So, that's the rig. I've got to. Oh, I'll fish on here, boys. That's Do you think it's a nibble? <laughs> there you go, Mike. You have to take him under that one, I think. Is he on? Yeah, I think he is. If he's still there. Yeah. So, that's the rigs we're nailing these fish on, people. Yeah. Lead at the bottom. 25 pound main line there. And just a short pattern on this, but I think the secret to this bream fishing is small hooks. They're size four, they are wide gate carp hooks, and they are very, very sharp. So basically, all I'm doing is try cuttlefish. We have caught on cuttlefish, but we're doing better by far with the fresh squid. Very fresh frozen, fresh caught by our fair hand. I wish I kept more. Just like this, look. I just go once, twice three times that's all I do and because we've got big baits here I figure oh look at the jellyfish there oh yeah oh my god how big that one is Graham don't do it don't do it I want to catch a jellyfish missed him <laughs> anyway you've seen that one over there just lob it right back I put it pretty well in a line with my big baits down here and where the rice is coming out from the tube and it appears the tide is still funneling up up the up the channel here and you can let it go down quite quickly just check your drag and that goes down there 100 squid is better that was fresh squid as well is you all right for bait yeah. Well, we're piling the bream one after the other. They're loving a little bit of ground bait. And they're certainly, most certainly, I'm gonna get spiked there, people. They're loving these little bits of squid on these small hooks and they're absolutely as fat as a barrel, these fish. 
I wonder what they're eating. Absolutely as fat as you could want. Every time I cast more to the left, yes. I've had more bites. Out here, I think it's sand or something. Yeah, it could be. Somehow there's more reef than just to the left, which is why you're getting the hammering over there. Well, sort of straight out. Yeah. It's a good rod, that, isn't it? A good little rod for yeah. a travel rod. It's a fun rod. We've got some decent fish. I think we used it piking as well, but Pike it's uh, a very mackerel. good. Spinning off the mackerel. Spinning, good spinning rod. I've got to go left now as well. And here he comes, here he comes. Look, they're, oh, they're not small bream at all. About, about eight now, probably. More than that, nine or ten, I think. No more than ten. Fresh squid, definitely, isn't it? And I've had a bite off that other one that's stripped. Yeah. You guys might be able to see what we've done is, just like sharkfish, we put the rice a lot shallower in that chum tube, seeing if we get anything up, you know, because having had that mackerel and the, the uh, Needlefish, no, it's a black bream. Maybe they're coming up in the water. That's a, that's a pretty nice one. That's a really good bream, actually. I think that's they a might be a keeper, that one. That's a keeper. That could be tea. Oh, good right. job. We're measuring. Well, we're still picking away at the fish slowly. We're waiting for this tide to turn. Mike's got, uh, well, probably, a, we think it's a dogfish on here. Again, we've changed to the uh, squid strip and we definitely, definitely seem to be getting more Doggy. action on that. Got another line, but don't matter. He's here and there's the fish. I might be able to get him clear for you. I think he's only twisted back. No, I've got him ready. Yeah. And here he comes. There we go. English equivalent to sharks. Rough. As you see, he shut his eye. Very, very rough. Flies for him. He's out. There's the protective mode with those. Yeah, where they wrap it around the back of your hand. Now. Oh. What is this? This doesn't feel like Six a dogfish. What? Doesn't feel like a dogfish. This could be Ray, it's planing. I don't know, or conger. It's planing Maybe up. it's a small conger. That's a different species. I don't feel a dogfish pulling this hard, I must admit. No. This rod is uh, quite stiff. I've actually broken it up here and I've glued it together, make a one piece rod. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't fit in many rod holders, <laughs> rod tubes for going a ball. It's not a travel rod. I don't know what this is. I, I, I want to say a dogfish, but I, I don't think I've got any other lines here. Unless I've picked my other line up, this one. Who knows? Oh, of course. It's a, a giant Mancunian jellyfish that we've seen going under the boat. <laughs> oh. That's a funny fight. That's it's got a, a sort of a ray fight to yeah, it. It's planing up in the water. I don't even want to think of it. Or as it's a tangled dogfish. I don't know, but What's no, it's kicking, it's kicking. I see a big there, kick, it's not a, it's, right, it's not a dogfish kick. What Where the is hell that? is that? Conga. Conga eel. Conga. Oh, 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 conga eel. Yes. On a, on a baby rod. <laughs> Another species. Uh, yeah, just about to get tangled. Hang on. Now, they could come off at any time. And you grabbing fish like this, just be aware there is another very sharp and loose hook at the top. So, not a big congreel, but a congreel nevertheless. Just hanging there. I'm more worried about the loose hook, but there you go, guys. Not a big one, there are some big ones out here, but that's a nice one to catch, and on this light rod, Really, really good little scrap on it. We are having a bit of a blinder of a day. I think there's five species now. 
uh, the crushing power of these things. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. unbelievable. It would take your fingers off easy. Yeah, they spin. They spin. That's what it, it is. Yeah, the jaw crushing power. Just, you got no teeth, just 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 crushing power. Let's get him unhooked. I'll tell you what's nice: conga slime over the trousers on a hot day. <laughs> just turn him hook upside down. Look. Boom. Easy as that. Swims Go away. Off he goes. Lovely. Doing well, Dad. Yeah, it's good. We've got fish for the frying pan. Yeah. If you want to stretch out line, if there's anything there. Wind on it fast. Dog. One turns. That's not a dog, surely. Crank on him. Oh, kick. You might. One of those congas that spit the bait, I reckon. Keep him nice and tight. No, that's not a dog, is it? That's, that's my up tide rod, so I reckon that's. That hopefully, we might get to see. A bigger conger wheel than last time, who knows? It might come off, congers do come off. So they've got such strong jaw pressure, they just... Uh, I don't reckon this is a dirty bag. No. It'll be bigger than our previous... Bigger right? than the previous yeah. one, yeah. It's getting heavier as he comes. Yeah, it's getting... I don't think there's no, other, there's no other lines up that way, you see? So I'm thinking that was cast away from the boat, so I'm hoping... Oh, look down here. Little cut, little bites. cut away here. <laughs> oh, oh, he comes as conger eel. Yeah, it's a better size. It'll be a bigger one, isn't it? Yeah. They got like twist. Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Belly. He's been eating something there, isn't he? Yeah. Go on. This boat, this boat, you just go from one boat, one rod to the other. Who? On this boat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have a kind of coke and have a, have a little drink, stay on the next fish. What a setting, boys. Look at that. Just off the cliffs of Dover. Oh, he's going well. Yeah. Suddenly woke up. I don't know if he's a Probably a bit small, yeah. Yeah. But he must be 20. We must have no, sorry, 20, 20 by now, I'll tell you. I love the markings on the Bits of yellow. Guys, we're just standing here talking, and Mike's had a bite on the light rod, and the light rod is about ready to explode. It is definitely, definitely a fish. We thought the last time was hung in the bottom, but this might be a big eel. This could be the record for this light rod. Just lift, re keep it low. There's the kick. It's definitely, definitely a fish. Lovely and slow. Are there any other lines around it? No. There's this. Well, we'll just let him go if he wants to. And keep it low, the rod, so you've got more, more play on the line. So I talk pointed towards a fish more. Yeah, just there. That's it. Just short pumps, almost hand line it. Very, very slow, because it's got current with it as well. That rod is not meant for this. I say you'll, you'll, you'll see when he starts to kick towards the, with the tide, that's just, just the ease towards him. Whoa, this is a tiny hook, we could come back, I expect we get the hook straight in, but it'd be nice to see what it is. It would be good to just see, it's got to be a conger. Or, or you've hooked a bream and a conger's eating a bream. Because they are tiny size four hooks. Just do just short one turn, slow pumps, no shock. Try and maintain the same pressure. Where are we? This would be a record for the any fish. If you lose line, you lose line. Let it lose. He won't go in the rocks now. Just one turn and slow, and then put the pressure on him slow. I have to let him take Yeah, if he'll break it, otherwise the hook will come back straight like we had before. If you hook up, get him in, in the rocks where he got caught up. He just, it's just a time thing. Oh, good fish. Oh, tell by this way, you stopped the, yeah, stopped the, the rod coming back then, didn't it? You absolutely stopped it. I know it's only a light rod. It's probably a, a strap, but it's well, just don't nice know, to yeah. catch it on this rod. It would be, yeah. I just want to see it.
and I'll take you a tour of the boat while, while he's still fighting it. As you can see, it comes with additional life vests, life buoys. Go around your waist, you come up in the middle. Put the anchor there, got our fish box, buckets. Put the rice away, we finished all the rice, we got through the rice. Lovely old boat, so now you got the bilge pump, it's a hand pump for getting water out of it. Oh dear, something's happening. Heard a real, real going, yeah. You do it slow, nice and slow. Oh, look, it might not be a conga. I think it is. It was Congo, it's not kicking like a. Yeah, well, you see it. I wonder where your underwater camera is. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let him go. Out that rod, isn't it? Yeah, just let the lion do his drag, do his job. Just keep easing it easy. It's coming up very steep for a conga. Get it while you can. I don't think you've got any other lines here because I cast the other lines way back. So I think it's in a little zone. Oh, just let him go. Just you sort of just what you gain, he takes back. Yeah, it seems like they get to a certain. It's a forever battle. Well, just they get a certain light level of light that yeah. they don't like, and then they, that's it. They want to go back down again. Yeah, I think you're right. It's, oh, there is the shape. There's, it's a nice conga. Oh, nice conga. We can see him under the water. Take it real slow. Oh no, it's a big one. Let him, oh. let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Oh. <laughs> now it's even more frustrating. It's frustrating. When you can we see, see it. it? It's on a tiny, tiny hook. This is a, yeah. Now be careful because the last thing we need is a straightened hook. Let me give a chin gaff. He's spinning. Don't keep him on the surface. Yeah. Keep him under the water. He's coming with a day. Fucking hell, it's a fucking big one. What? Look at this one. What can you do, buddy? Watch out, you can lose it. Oh, no. No. <laughs> right, I've got a chin gaff here somewhere. It's here, it's here. It's there. When you get a fish like this on light tackle, the minute you touch the trace, it snapped. It's so like the line as well, the yeah. line, everything. There he goes. On ah, on cat and hook here, cat hook. <laughs> Bring him up to me, my boy. Right, now the line's going to be really tight. Go in. We <laughs> got him, boy. Yes, <laughs> look at the carp hook. <laughs> <laughs> the hook. I'll take the camera out. The hook is hanging there. Put him in a boat, Dad. Yes, get him in. That's a double figure one, I tell you. Oh. Watch him loose hooks. Wow, we look at the size of that one, boys. A beauty. That's a good bit of fishing to get that, you know. Yeah, that was good fun. Well, there we go. <laughs> that was on a tiny five-piece rod. Look at the size of that fish. A carp hook, like what size two or something? Four. Four, or even smaller. Size, size four. Four carp hook. Look at the size of the head on it. The Listen. muscles, jaw crushing muscles on this thing. We've got it on a release gaff, which is an, a no barb on the hook. So we just undo that hook, just pull it out and it will it will swim away. But that is a beauty. That's, that's a, that was a unforeseen on a rod like that really, wasn't it dad? We, we were kissing goodbye to that gear really. That, uh, I thought that was, I thought the hook would go or the trace. Yeah, that's awesome. Or the rod, it could have been any one of three because it's definitely not a five piece double no. rod fish. Good fight as well. Unbelievable fight, Let brilliant. recover. You won't take much recovery, that's a double finger conga. Tide's flowing fast. Fish is just letting it recover a bit. Ooh. He's ready to go anyway. Push it out, and there he goes. He's gonna go down. There he goes, he's gonna kick. There we go. Boom, there's the kick. That was awesome. Job done. <laughs> Here we go, people. If you can see, one, two, three. Three rods, we got a triple header, don't tell me the ground bait, the fresh squid, the rice don't all come together. Well, in fact, I think the lines are coming together, aren't they? That's a fish you've got there. That's a fat one. So Mike's got a double on there. He's not tagging. This is a nice fish. Let's hope that one doesn't ping off. Look at this. Three at a time and just... Oh, I think that looks close to fisher today. That is a big bream. Look at the beautiful yeah, colours in that. Look at the size of these fish. They're like beautiful colours, jumbos, all sizeable now. Absolutely fantastic. And I think, do you know, a lot of it's got to be these small hooks as well. It's a combination of everything. Meanwhile, Mike's keeping his two fish on the line. Well, we're getting into some more sizeable fish, and I'm getting into a tangle as well. Hang on, I'll drop this one down. But the main thing is, is we're getting into some good eating fish now. Yeah, we want to hold one for you. It's just gone round the bale. Hold on. It's 
just played with that one. Yeah, not a bad one. Quite interesting, as I've wound it, I guess. Clear. There we go. Oh, hang on. <laughs> it's eh? another triple. No. <laughs> oh, yes. What? The white kanji is on again. Yeah. <laughs> That's another triple. Three fish. So this is a different speed. I oh, know it is a bream, but it's too small. But we do have a few in the cooler down there. That's a small one. Dad just got a really good, nice size one. So we're going to do a catch and cook. We're going to cook one up, and I'm, we're going to take some home as well. Definitely. Tiny hooks we use. Little small hooks. These two small. Take this one. It's better. This one. I got this one. Oh, so yeah, we're still on a double. So that's like two triples we had. Yeah, we're, we're into about 25 fish now. 27. Uh, more though. We had uh, 25, 26, 28. 20, this is 29. If you get this one, it might come off. This one came off. Feel he's come off. Yeah. He's off, doesn't matter. Back down again, straight back check, down with it. Check the bait. Yeah, all that right. looks alright, yeah. It's a bit twisted. They're obviously in there big time. Yeah, they're on a feeding frenzy. All those fish down there now. I'm going to see uh, if there's anything on the left on the conga bait because it could be the. They're like piranhas all over the bait here. And they could be stripping all the baits off. I think I'm down to just cuttlefish. Now they've they stripped that back, but they haven't taken all of it. So drop it back down again. He's a, he's a good size. Got it in the sunlight. Are these on the bottom on there? A bit under, I think. Yeah, we've got enough in there now. Get go for the big ones. I think so, yeah. Why do we know we're well over? Oh, this is lovely here. Yeah. More baits. We need more strip baits, people. It's like a processing factory. that one okay yeah. so there you go people just a sample of what you can catch if you want to do ground baiting at sea first time you've done it with rice mate first time with rice yeah and probably the best black bream session I've had uh, down in the south coast of the UK definitely. 32 fish I think we finished yeah really good. and check out the size and show them that mackerel it's a big mackerel it is a jamborini of my mackerel that one <laughs> yeah and we're gonna get these what baked uh, yeah we're gonna keep a few well we've kept a few of them bake yeah. them I might fill it with mackerel or oh, now well, we might use them for bait but we might fill it in as well yeah the rest I think we'll just bake them whole cook them whole that's what they say bake yeah. green bake green so thanks yeah. for watching the totally awesome fishing show we've had a great blast out here today and we really, really good, good really, really good. good fishing we caught all those fish and not a dozen dogfish yeah. a couple of congas Whoops, the conga on the uh, light what? tackle rod as well yeah unbelievable good session and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and Mike's TA Outdoors this is a collaboration between a father and a son try and support us we'll see you next time